What's up, vibes family? Welcome back to the channel where this little vibey Caribbean girl shows you how to make stuff and be vibey all the time. Boom. <laughs> My name is Lydia Deborah, and in today's video, I am showing you how to draft a pattern for a pair of high waisted bikini bottoms because summer is right around the corner, and I know we all are geared up for it, especially after this whole lockdown business. Anyway, I've divided the video into chapters, however, I suggest that you don't skip this first part because whew, it took a lot of trial and error for me to create this pattern and get it right. And so I've obviously made a couple mistakes like prototype 1, prototype 2, prototype 3, prototype 4 prototype five and there's a sixth one that i got so frustrated with that i i just threw it away so yeah let me share those mistakes with you such that you don't make the same mistakes so the first thing is see my pattern here notice the size like see my head and notice how big the pattern pieces are it's absolutely correct as long as you follow the measurements and the instructions it's going to look pretty big the mistake that I made was that I assumed that that was way too big so I decided to just downsize the pattern and try to create or try to sew a bikini bottom a pair of bikini bottoms out of that <laughs> it did not take long before I realized that it was way too small and that it was not going to work and I ended up having to go back to using this size right here the original size it is going to work out trust me it just looks a lot bigger or it just looks big but once you put everything together it's going to fit no worries the second mistake that i made was assuming that i can create it or can, that i could sew it without using elastic i've seen people do it and it worked for them i guess i assume it has to do with the fabric that they used and it definitely did not work with the fabric that I use it is stretch fabric most definitely is but you know all fabrics are not created the same and I believe that if I had used elastic with this one they would have turned out just the way that I wanted them to turn out like this was the one before the last prototype and I really thought that I got it right like it looks right and everything but when I tried it on it kind of just drooped down and it sagged in the butt because there was no elastic to just hold it in place so I say, regardless of the fabric that you're using, just use elastic to be on the safe side. Just do that. The third mistake that I made was cutting my pattern piece and therefore the fabric at an angle. Let me show you. So when I hold it up like this, you will see that it is not straight. Like it should have been looking like this, straight edge. Instead, it's angled slightly this way. And what that did is see so it's like it's the point where the front and the back meet at the hip so when I hold it up like this you see that it creates like a sort of triangular point right here so what happens is that when I put it on this part just juts out and it doesn't cling to my body it just it just sticks out honestly and then because of that you don't have the underwear like just clinging to your body and it doesn't stay up so then you don't really get the high-waisted effect because it kind of just droops and it just turns into a great anti-climax and i did that with this one and this one i tried to save this one instead it just ended up be going from like triangular to more square-ish like i really just messed it up even more like you can see right here like what is happening i don't even know it just looks terrible i don't even know if it's twisted you see yeah so that was that so those three things are three things i would like for you to keep in mind going forward drafting your own pattern now remember that this is a two-part video this video is going to teach you how to draft the pattern and video number two you will see me using the pattern to sew my very own pair of high-waisted bikini bottoms and you'll see how it turns out and yeah you can decide if it works for you or not if that's what you're going for or not but yeah now you're more than ready <laughs> to start the tutorial good luck and i hope that you're happy with the result of your hard work all right guys so we're starting off by getting some measurements and i'm using elastic so with the first piece of elastic i'm tying that around my waist 
which is a lot higher than people tend to think it is but it's not and now i'm taking the second piece of elastic and i'm tying it around my hip and if you want to know where your hip is it's right there where your leg bends if you were to lift your leg so that right there is what is considered the hip at least when you're sewing so i'm tying the elastic right at that point and make sure that it's sitting evenly all the way around and you don't want it to be like hop and drop high and low just even all the way around and as for the elastic that's around your waist you want to move around a little and where the elastic just settles naturally that's your natural waist so yeah give all your like a shake your wine already <laughs> so like if you're still watching give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel for more of this type of content now let's get back to measuring all right so i have my measuring tape and i have this little trick that i like to do i take a pin i literally stick a pin into it so that it doesn't like unfurl all the way because i just hate when that happens it's just too much measuring tape to work with and now you're just going to measure at the points where you have the elastic so my waist measurement at least before i eat <laughs> is 27 and a half inches And now I'm measuring my hip and this is where it's really good that you have the elastic because you're going to use it as a guide see my measuring tape wasn't exactly where it needed to be but the elastic helped me see that yes so the measurement for my hip is 36 and a half inches now we're moving on to measuring hip to waist so simply from the elastic around your waist to the one around your hip and mine is eight inches no crotch depth so you want to sit on a hard surface for this <laughs> your head is in the gutter not that kind of hard surface and measure from your waist down to the hard surface and yeah that's the crotch depth 11 and a half inches now we want to work on our adjusted measurements it's math time so the adjusted width is equal to your hip divided by two and that's 18 and a quarter inches for the height you're going to get the measurement for your crotch depth add 1.5 and then add three to it don't ask me why you don't just add four and a half um, that's how i learned to do it i didn't question it probably should have but yeah didn't <laughs> for the adjusted waist you're going to need the waist measurement divide that by four and multiply that by the reduction factor what is that you might wonder <laughs> classes in session take a look the reduction factor depends on how stretchy your fabric is and the fabric i'm using is i would say somewhere between moderate stretch and stretchy and as you can see that will give me a range of 0 0.7 to 0.9 so i'll pick like the middle point which is 0 0.8 0 <laughs> 0.8 which gives me five and a half inches and now for your adjusted hip that's your hip times your reduction factor which for me again is 0 0.8 divided by four i'll provide a little document in the description to make that easier like with a list of the equations yeah yeah so now we have our measurements our adjusted measurements and then as you can see we have some additional measurements and well these are standard so you're not going to have to do anything to them they just are what they are i will leave those in the document as well so now we're going to start drawing our pattern yay all right, so the first line there was the width and you draw that as a horizontal line at the top of your pattern making paper now i'm using a regular a4 printing paper and i'm not doing it to scale i'm using centimeters here and it's just for the purpose of showing you how to do it so so far the horizontal line is our width and the vertical lines perpendicular to the horizontal line that's the height so i hope you're following so far <laughs> so i'm just marking that to make it clear but then it got blurry 
but you know so from the width line along the height line <laughs> you're going to mark or you're going to measure and mark your hip or your waist to hip measurement which for me is eight inches but i'm just marking eight centimeters and you're doing that on both sides and now connect those two marks like so the next measurement is the crutch depth and you're measuring it the exact same way on both height lines and then you're connecting them like so so I'm just marking that that top line is my waist and then I have the hip line followed by the crotch line and these are kind of like our guidelines now that we're going to start creating our pattern on so the next measurement is our adjusted waist five and a half and you're marking that on the waistline measuring on both sides both left and right all right just like that and on the hip line we're going to use the measurement for the adjusted hip along the hip line. So, you know, it's kind of obvious and mark that on both sides as well. And now look here, we can start connecting the line from the waist to the hip on either side. So what we're doing is we're building the back and the front pattern pieces for our bikini bottoms. Somebody call SpongeBob. So I'm marking it now already because as we go forward, we're going to be using um, different measurements to differentiate back from front. So let's work on the back. So now we're going to be measuring from the crotch line and we're measuring the back crotch extension which is one three eighths of an inch. And I really couldn't figure out what that was there. So I kind of just mm, guessed. Now from that point, we're going to um, measure the back crotch width, which is one and a quarter inches, like so. And now we're just going to connect those two with a line. Do you see how it's coming together? Watch, 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 watch. Now we're going to connect the crotch to the hip. Et voila. Can you see it? Although it looks like the backside of a pair of granny panties, we're still getting there. Now for the front, there is no extension. We're just going to directly measure the front crotch width on the crotch line. And what I like to do on the hip line is divide it into three. And I know that wasn't really totally equal. I know it wasn't even so the point that I'm showing you there that first third when you're connecting this line now it's going to be a curved line and you want the highest point of the curve to be just above that first third mark like so you see that so from that point I want to start bringing the curve downward so that's your guideline to make sure that your underwear or your bikini bottoms are going to curve at the right place on your body, basically. So here it is, and you can use this to make underwear or bikini bottoms, same way, same thing. And what I would do now is cut the pattern in half so that back and front are separate and then I would use pattern paper actually I use regular regular baking paper you see and I'm going to trace it and get a copy of the first ones that way you can keep the first ones and create all kind of different styles of underwear or bikini bottoms from that original pattern yeah and also in case you mock it up you always have that original one to go back to so make sure you use the original, trace it, trace it to create a duplicate and then use the duplicated pattern pieces 
to adjust and alter to create this high-waisted pattern piece so make sure that you keep the originals duplicate them and use the duplicates to you know draw cut potentially mess up but then at least you always have your original pattern piece to create another duplicate from and you can also use it to create different styles like high-waisted low-waisted um, cheeky bottoms fuller coverage so just always keep the original pattern piece and like I said I'm just using a regular baking paper to draw my patterns on and I really don't know why I was trying uh, to make a curved line using a straight ruler <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at Dum Dum try to figure it out. Watch out, watch out. I don't, what do you, dude, come on. <laughs> so I ended up freehanding it anyway. At this point, you also need to figure out if you want to include or exclude your seam allowance. If you're going to include your seam allowance now when you're creating your pattern, remember that you would use just about a quarter of an inch for your seam allowance. So here I'm marking my pattern piece. Since we're altering the shape of it, you're not going to be able to tell the back from the front from the original shape. So make sure that you are marking back and front so you know who is who and what is what. Cause we don't have time for the mix up, all right? Now we're going to repeat the process on the back side of the pattern piece, except for one thing. You see when we measure that right there to figure out the width of the waistband and then we proceed to connect that to our crotch. Make sure that you do it wider than you did on the front piece so as to get enough coverage so that your bikini bottoms will actually cover your bottom unless you actually want it to be hanging out. And mine kind of did but i didn't mind them fitting that way at all but i think if i did if i if i made another pair i would definitely make the back a bit wider so i could get a bit more coverage so when you're connecting this line right here this very line take a look at your front pattern piece and make sure that you do it wider on this back piece that way it's going to be pretty sure that you're going to have a bit more coverage because remember you have more back than you have front and you want everything to fit <laughs> so yeah just compare the front pattern piece to the back pattern piece and make sure that the back pattern piece is wider than the front and you should be you should be pretty okay but that's why i like to always make a prototype before i use my good up good up fabric I always like to make a prototype to make sure it's going to fit the way I want it to fit. It does take more time, but sewing a prototype ensures that I don't waste my fabric because I usually use some other cheaper fabric to sew my prototype. From here, what you would do is cut out your pattern and you're ready. You're ready to use it. You're ready to use it to cut out your fabric and start sewing your bikini bottoms. Don't forget to check out the next video where I show you how I actually sewed my bikini bottoms using this pattern. Guys, I'm so proud of myself. Like the weeks it took me to do this. Yo, you don't even know. <laughs> so make sure you stay tuned for part two of this video to see what I made out of this pattern all right guys thank you so much for tuning into this video and remember like i said before it's a two-part video the next video will show you how i sew the bikini bottom so make sure that you're here next friday to catch that i know i've been very bad at consistently posting here on youtube but i am um I'm definitely getting better. I'm going to get better at it. I've created a schedule and everything as far as, you know, my private life so that I can get time to do this because on the side of this, I'm also a student and I'm currently um, interning. So it's a lot to do, plus life just in general. Um, but I'm, I'm going to make a proper effort to be here every single week for you guys. So make sure that you check me out every single Friday 
click the notification bell so you always know when I post a video and we can vibe together because I like that stuff. So until next week, bye-bye. <laughs>